Hey, we're going to talk about how to build the bed. So come back in time with me to about a year ago and I'll show you what was going on with this bed before it was fully built out. Despite the shaky camera work and the highly caffeinated state, rambling state that I was in at the time, you're going to get a lot of good details about what this looks like underneath. So let's go check it out. And if this is your first time here, welcome, I'm Leslie. I built out our camper van and I'll be going through each bit of this camper build to show you exactly how I did it. You can do it too if you're so inclined. So since you're here, uh, why don't you go ahead and subscribe and we can keep in touch. But for now, come back with me to when this bed was in mid build. Let's go. So here's what it looks like as a skeleton. You see that the first thing I did was, well, yes, this is the first thing I did was I built this. Not true. Hold on. This is the first thing I did. The first thing I did was I built this platform, mainly because it was the easiest thing to do and I needed a quick victory. So with the platform in place, I was ready to build the frame that it goes on. The reason I wanted to do the platform first was because I wanted to have all the measurements of how it was going to fold up and how much room I needed for, you know, the seat of it, you know, and then how it was all going to work together. And then I needed to know where those hinge points were going to land because that determined where I put these crossbars on the bed frame. Makes sense, right? So one thing in before the other, all in a logical order. So with the platform being made, I went ahead and started to construct the bed frame. Uh, the bed frame is made of two by fours with some two by sixes going across. This is where the hinge points hit and I wanted some support for those weak areas. I used a series of right angle braces and some, you see that, some T braces and some corner braces and all that stuff. Um, so it was a matter of sort of trial and error and seeing what feels really sturdy and now it feels super sturdy. You can see here that it sits in the well here, this well that exists behind, oh, that's a mess, behind the third row seats, which you, as you can see, aren't there anymore because I took them out. Okay, this will, this will be underneath the part of the platform that flips up. So it'll be a bench, it'll be part of the bed, it'll be also um, part of a bench, and then it'll flip up so you can access all the storage down here. Now, you'll notice that the rear legs are much longer than the front legs, and of course that's because they ha this has to be supported all the way down to the bottom of the well, and the front just has to be supported down to the whatever level the front of the, uh, the bed frame sits at. So constant measuring back and forth uh, with this to keep, and I know it's not level. Okay, I, I know it's not, it never will be. Uh, you're never gonna park on a completely level ground so it doesn't matter it just has to be relatively level you can always get levels for your vehicle and you can always just figure out which way is most comfortable with your head above your feet so that's my take on it the important measurement here was to figure out how exactly how tall this thing should be exactly what height this frame should be because you want to be able to sit comfortably you want to be able to not hit your head against the ceiling and you also well i am also going to install a i'm also going to install a table that's going to be hitched to that blue portion of the counter cabinet and so that has to be a specific height relative to the seat right it just makes sense so t just trying and trying and trying and then finally you find the right uh finally you find the right height I definitely cut these legs longer than they had to be and just whittled it down. So it took about three tries just to get it to the right height. And that's the way it should be. You want to start high and then just start whittling it down until you get to the point where you're happy with it. So that's what I did for the bed frame. So that's the bed frame. The next thing I did was I wanted to secure the frame to the actual 
frame of the vehicle. Oh yeah, yeah, I did. Because I don't want this thing to move. You can throw a frame in there, no problem. But I want it to be super secure and really stable. I don't want this thing to move a bit, and <laughs> it doesn't. So what I did was I noticed that after I took out the third row seats, there were these bolt holes. And I removed the bolt, so I stored them and labeled them and all that. So what I did was I decided that I would put a series of blocks, just wood blocks, because there's not a lot of space in there. There was maybe, you know, four inches by three or four inches in each little spot here. But I just took these wooden blocks and positioned them over where I wanted them to be. Then I marked out where the bolt holes should go, and that was pretty much a guess. And I think I used chewing gum. I'm not even kidding to figure out where they should be. And then just drilled some holes. I went to Ace Hardware and I got some long, good long bolts that fit in there properly. And then I was able to get a, what is that? Like a one by four that I put over that with a little weather stripping in between so there wouldn't be any squeaks. And I put this one by four over the blocks. Then from there, I just built, I put a couple of little legs in here, some extra legs that go up to the bed frame, as you can see. And, you know, it's just some braces. So, and that's all it took. I thought it might take more. I was actually worried that that wasn't going to be enough, but just those braces in there are good. They're perfect. And I don't even think I glued one of them, I think where the T braces are, I don't think I glued that because I want to be able to disassemble it and, you know, remove it in some big chunks. Okay, so that's in place and that's pretty solid. The reason I don't have the platform attached yet to the frame is because I'm still measuring a bunch of things around it and it just would get in the way. So the, the platform is going to be one of the last things to be installed with the cushions on top of it. It's just easier to work around this frame than it is to work around it with a platform installed on it. In addition to that, I wanted to work on installing a couple of things. Like my next step was to put these little pillars in here. And th these are the supports for the shelf that goes in this rear window well, you see? Aha. Uh -huh. So those, pil those little what do you call them? Those little pillars. They have to be secured <laughs> to the bed frame somehow. So that's what I did. I just put down a two by two and I think another two by two and just screwed it all together. And so now I have these things that are very secure and they're going to be part of the support of the whole shelf. There will be more support and you'll see that coming. The shelf is obviously cardboard, so I'm working on my stencils right now uh, and my templates. Another thing you see is that foam core board that's in the window. So I just got some black foam core board and I went around the edge of it with a little black tape and that's it. Put those bad boys in there and I did one on each side. And they work perfect for just keeping the light out. Now, these are going to be behind the shelves. So it's not going to matter that they don't look gorgeous. And it's not going to... The only thing that matters for these is that they block out the light. And they're working fine. Just simple foam core board. Uh, it, can, it can be foam core board because it just has to sit there. I'm not going to be taking it in and out. It doesn't have to be uh, fancy, flexible, and non-breakable. It just... And it's cheap. It's foam core board, my God. So an easy solution for that. So that's what's going on in the rear of the adventure van right now. Hopefully that gives you an insight as to my, what my thinking process was, uh, what my design process was. Again, it's just a matter of, you know, figuring out what it is you want to do, how you're going to, how you're going to execute it and just a ton of measuring and putting it all together. And trying to think ahead a few steps, too. That's, I think, for me, that's a, a major deal, is trying to think a couple of steps ahead. If I do this, then what? If I want to build these little support pillars for the shelves, what do I need to do to do that? Okay, I need to anchor it to something. What am I going to anchor it to? 
the bed frame. Okay, I guess I need to build the bed frame. <laughs> And if I build the bed frame, then I think I need to have it securely fastened so it's not moving. So I can then go ahead and secure the shelf supports. So just think in that logical order that really helps establish what needs to be done first. And if, if then, do the if then scenario. If I do this, then what? Then what am I committing myself to? If I glue something down so I can't move it again, what is that going to mean? What else? Why would I need to move it? So that's the process I'm using. And it's helped. It's also, it's a good mental exercise. Okay, so I'll get into more fun details uh, next time. So look for the next video. And thanks for stopping in. I'll talk to you later.